Ah, le tough, the ultimate force, a name chosen by a master of celibacy, no doubt. I mean, that thing smells like testosterone everywhere you are willing to smell it. And today we are reviewing its most affordable one, the Tough Gaming B650 Plus Wi-Fi. A motherboard here to tell you, military grade is not only a protein shake, it is also an overly resistant PC componentry. And as a Frenchman, I'm obviously all about intense gaming with my Tough once in a while. Now, despite that strangely subjective intro, we're here to review a real engineered motherboard. And what made me choose that one in particular is one, its price point, 200 bucks, about, before taxes, and the fact that it really tries to balance three really hard variables to achieve each on their own. First, achieving serious gaming grade performances. Second, populating the board with extremely resistant components, hence the military grade appellation, and the whole thing at a somewhat controlled cost. And the only way any manufacturers could pull this off is in applying an absolute uh, uh, control on the board componentry and making this product unapologetically focused. So, no nonsense features. Here. Now, starting with the obvious. The Tough B650 boards come with a six layered ATX PCB, which is adequate for a mainly PCIe 4.0 operating motherboard. Now, the more PCB layers your board features, a better PCIe signal installation it has. Therefore, the higher bandwidth it can swap between your build componentry without risking system instability. It also means a thicker overall board, which increases your VRM heat dissipation rate and provoke an overall longer lifespan. A rather important fundamental checked by uh, Asus and Tough here. Now, design-wise, we stay in a very dark military theme. The VRM has a pleasing minimalistic slash monolithic feel to it. The PCB does show some aesthetic care with a few metric clues and a few orange underlines. No embedded RGB, which, as I see it, is not a bad thing. And talking of which, if you do want to complement your build with some RGB yumminess, we do have four RGB Aura compliant connectors, three of which are addressable. CPU socket wise, our tough B650 shows off AMD very first L. LGA CPU socket featuring 1718 low pressure contacts been greatly improving the CPU bandwidth ability when compared to its previous iteration. That is an important point since it will allow boards like this to support both DDR5 RAM memory or even PCA 5.0 bandwidth standards. Now, Getting in the thick of it, VRM-wise, the Tough B650 has a rather well-appointed yet modest 1460 Dr. Most Power Stages organized in a 6 plus 1 parallel phases configuration. And the first thing to note here is that, well, when you're dealing with parallel phases, it's a little bit less agile. So it's by definition not a very performant overclocking machine. Secondly, having 740 amps of CPU-centric power is, is all right and will do a great job for medium and even higher tier processors, but do not expect this to be a CPU performance screamer. It will do great to run your CPU to its maximal stock clock, but that's about it, which kind of makes sense coming from a more budget, non-overclocking B650 powered motherboard anyways. Now, I want to mention the capacitors, which did receive the tough treatment and therefore have a 5K graded resistance instead of the usual 2K. Again, great for this board extended lifespan. As far as the cooling solution goes, well, it is totally adequate. We have a two separated block configuration, which are both large, tall, and feature several levels of wide radiating plates. They also provide a direct thermal padded contact to both power stages and chokes for a faster heat dissipation. Temperatures results are unsurprisingly good. With a Ryzen 9 7900X clocked at 5.5 GHz on all cores, and after a 75 minute synthetic stress test, both VRM blocks stayed around a cool 55 degrees Celsius. But on the clocking side, this board did not manage to stably operate um, a CPU at, at its maximum 5.6 GHz stock turbo clock. Definitely not an enthusiastically driven VRM, that I'll tell you. But nevertheless, a very decent one for even upper tier Ryzen processors, just as long as you stay in the turbo clock range. 
or, or almost. Um, I'll give this VRM a solid B+, and would recommend pairing it with you know, anything between Ryzen 5 to Ryzen 7 series processors. Now, memory-wise, RTUF supports up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual-channel configuration and clockable up to a very fast 6.4GHz. And in a nutshell, if you compare it to its DDR4 predecessors, what DDR5 memory will bring you is 50% more bandwidth, a higher clock, and you will start around 6 GHz and up, you will start seeing real performance gain on AAA uh, video gaming. But most importantly, it also helps a lot. And that's where you're going to see most of the DDR5 RAM benefits on memory-centric tasks, such as video editing and etc. So it gives that um, Tough B650 motherboard a lot of potential in both gaming and production uh, uh, context or scenarios, which is always a good thing. Now, staying in the memory, we have a rather modest 3 M.2 solid state drive configuration with our only PCIe 5.0 integration example, meaning that a compatible stick on this connector will be able to swap data up to a novel 128 gigabit per second. For the two other CPU-fed or not M.2 solid state drive connectors, they run up to a still plenty fast 64 gigabit per second each. Again, in par with the effort of keeping a very cleared layout and a more budget-focused product. The main risk here is a hit, which did show its teeth on the CPU-linked M.2 solid state drive and despite a thermal padded heat shield, which I did find a little thin. Now, last but not least, I do want to commend ASUS for adding its very own screwless locking mechanism, which does remain second to none in the industry today. And before departing our storage section, uh, we'll take a very quick note at the presence of our usual four SATA 3.0 plugs able to transfer data to a slow yet reliable 6 gigabit per second here to support our legacy drives. Now, expansion-wise, our TUF comes equipped with two bachelor slots and two 16 slots with different speeds. Simply said, all of them can run up speeds up to the PCIe 4.0 standards and only the closest one to your CPU gets a full 16 PCIe lanes worth of bandwidth. It's obviously, this is where you'd want your GPU installed for optimal gaming performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Not the most future-proofed uh, configuration in the world, granted, but that's what a B650 powered uh, motherboard will get you. And to be absolutely fair, 32 gigabyte per second worth of bi-directional uh, uh, bandwidth is more than enough uh, to operate the most expensive, you know, RTX 4090 uh, GPU out there. So as far as I'm concerned, I cannot complain. My only little critique, my little concern here is the fact that since we do not have a PCIe unlocking mechanism, as we can see on more expensive Asus motherboards, I would have liked to have a larger PCIe button to somewhat ease our GPU retrieval adventures. Would not cost more um, to the manufacturer, but certainly would make our life easier. Now, chipset wise, well, um, this is a tough B650. Therefore, powered by a B650 chipset provided by AMD. The most affordable and watered down chipset AMD has released this year. It runs on a very light 7 watt TDP, meaning that you do not need much of a heat plate to keep it cool. And after a severe 75 minute stress test, mine stayed comfortably below 50 degrees Celsius, which is rather good. Bandwidth wise, it does provide a limited amount of PCIe 3 and PCIe 4 lanes, but still manages to pull the B-series chipset on a more premium footing this year and make it a good dollar investment when compared to its competition, also known as Intel. Now, back IO wise well, first let me note the presence of a rather premium padded integrated back IO, always a good thing. And starting from the left, we have our display outputs for our integrated graphics, which is also a first since um, the Ryzen 7000 series um, is the first of AMD family to to propose integrated graphics as default, which is cool. As it's a 
it's about time, truth is. Next, we have four types A and C, USB 3.2 plugs, all able to swap up to 10 gigabit per second worth of data, except this one, which operates in a dual channel configuration and can therefore swap up to a heavier 20 gigabit per second. Next, we have four legacy and slow USB 2.0 plugs, a surge protected 2.5 gigabit LAN, our dual band Wi-Fi 6 adapter able to transfer up to 2.4 gigabit worth of data on the much cleaner 6 gigahertz radio spectrum. A BIOS flashback button which is very uh, useful especially for a CPU-less BIOS update. And finally our aged but still very premium 1200S Realtek audio codec serviced by a generous 500 worth of microfarads in capacitors. Now it does an extremely good job not only at rendering bass rich crystal clear audios, but also at recording static free audios, making it a safe invest for all kinds of streamers. Overall, a rather modest pack IO, I want to say, especially in terms of bandwidth, there is, there is not much there for anyone. And I think that Asus would not have spent too much more money swapping the USB 2.0 with 3.1, which would have gone from 480 megabit to 5 gigabit per plug. Um, so that's one thing. And I think that, yeah, that, that's a missed opportunity to make the tough B650 a little bit more premium than it should be because there's really, you know, a lack of bandwidth here. But on the other hand, I'm very happy to see some troubleshooting features with a flashback button and a very, very good audio uh, solution. Now, front panel connector wise, well, we do have an acceptable mix of USB second generation, 3.1, 5 gigabit plugs, 3.2 Type C, and even a Thunderbolt 4 connector for solid upgradability, if that's a word, which I am very glad to see since it is probably one of the most expensive bandwidth centric add on you can have on a motherboard today. Now, cooling wise, well, we are exactly where we should be, meaning seven connectors able to operate seven PWM fans including an all-in-one water cooling solution. It is what you want to see on a more classic, budget-oriented, well-air circulated build. Definitely not your custom water cooling enthusiast foundation, uh, but given the processing abilities and the fact that you, don't have, you do not have a PCIe 5.0 enabled GPU, um, a PCIe slot, you're fine. This is what was expected and this is what the tough very well delivers. Finally, troubleshooting wise, well, apart from our back uh, IO flashback button, we have our usual first aid easy debugger, which will do what it can to point you in the right direction in case of issue by signaling the main stages of your boot. Now, in conclusion, the tough gaming B650 plus Wi-Fi will cost you about 200 bucks, which is Rare enough these days for a big brand gaming motherboard. Most importantly, it is 110 bucks cheaper than the Asus Gaming Tough X670E Plus, which I had reviewed a few months back and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. And I'll say this. For once, Asus seems to give us a little bit more than usual for the price tag, I wanna say. And I'm sure I'm gonna get destroyed for what I'm saying. But despite a couple of misses, bandwidth-wise on the back I.O. and a bit of a cooling worry on the M.2 solid state drive sides of things, I find this stuff to be a very well-balanced product. We got a very capable VRM, very robust, reliable, very sturdy VRM, and to be fair, well-equipped to maintain low temps even in intense CPU processing. The RAM gives you plenty of clock for an agile gaming slash productivity build, and despite working with a chipset starter like the B650, we still have plenty of bandwidth coursing through the PCIe veins of this motherboard. And you know, I do love focused motherboards because they tend to remind us what is our priority, what is the most important features for us when we have to you know, negotiate between price and featuring. Uh, but this one managed to sparkle some premium into it. And it made me feel that this was not only manufactured as a product, but also engineered. In short, if you are on the market for a budget-minded build, which yet has a savagely good, solid, feature-rich foundation, well, there's not many options out there, and I do not think there's anywhere else your money wants to be.